Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I want to cover argparse, which is a Python standard library module, and it's useful for parsing command line arguments and writing, you know, your own command line tools. I covered this a little bit in, in an earlier episode, and I'll actually link that below, but we're going to go into more details about argparse today. So let's jump into that. Okay, so I've got a lot to cover today. So I left myself a little outline. This is the only prep that I did for this episode, so hopefully, hopefully this goes well enough. Uh, but I want to cover all of these various things about argparse and hopefully give you some examples that you can use in writing your own command line tools. Uh, but just to get started, I'm going to write kind of the boilerplate for a little command line app. Um, if you want more of an explanation of what this is about, the, uh, the video that I'll link in the description goes over this. So we're gonna be importing argparse, argparse. We'll also use pprint because we're gonna be doing some pretty printing from typing import sequence. And we'll have some typing here. And we're gonna indent these because we're gonna eventually you know, show examples of these side by side. Uh, optional sequence star equals none, return an integer. Cool. So we're going to add our argument parser here. argparse.argument parser. So this is kind of where you'll start all of your argparse based code. You'll instantiate an argument parser, and this instance of this class will be doing the argument parsing for us. And we'll be uh, modifying that class with some calls that'll set up all of the arguments that we want. And finally, we'll retrieve our args, uh, parser.parse args. And this little trick with argv, it, that gets explained in the other video, so I'm not going to re-explain it here, but it's a way to uh, allow, it, allow it to be easier to test. And we're just going to print out the arguments here, just to show what happens. So this is kind of like the very most bare-bone example of argparse, and we'll make it pep8 compatible, and you'll see if we run this, fm3t.py, you'll see that you know, we parsed, we parsed no arguments. Uh, but the nice thing that argparse gives us out of the box is it gives us a help for free. So we don't actually have to do anything to make help work. It'll automatically populate this. Um, but <laughs> we don't have any arguments or options or anything yet. So it's just, you know, <laughs> the most basic help that you can get. Now, one nice thing that it does give you is you'll get the program name in the output by default. And the help option is automatically documented. So you don't have to do anything special there. But anyway, there's the there's the most basics. <laughs> so let's uh, let's jump into our first topic, which is positional arguments in argparse. And argparse loosely follows the conventions of um, like GNU POSIX options, and so uh, a lot of this is convention driven. So let's let's add a positional argument. A positional argument. Well, all arguments in argparse. Well, almost all arguments in argparse are added using the add argument call. You'll do parser dot add argument. And for positional arguments, they are ones that do not start with a dash. Um, so if you do like file name as an example, this is a positional argument. And by default, positional arguments are required. So you'll notice there's no dash dash here. Um, and if we run this again with help, and if I could spell argument, <laughs> oops, uh, there we go. If we run this again with help, you'll see that now we have a positional argument here. And if we run this with no options, we'll actually get an error. This is a cool thing that argparse gives you out of the box, is you'll get error messages for things that are uh, problematic. And it's saying here that this uh, argument is required, because positional arguments by default are required. You can actually change that uh, with nargs, but we're not going to go over nargs here because it's a little bit complicated. <laughs> but if we you know, pass the file name now, you'll see that in our parsed arguments here, we got a file name foo. That's kind of our very most basic uh, stuff here. Now I'm actually going to move this topic up a little bit. Uh, we'll do we'll do positional and help at the same time. Uh, for any argument that you want to display a help message here, so you'll notice that when we got positional arguments here, this didn't actually you know, say anything. Um, it didn't explain what this file name is. Now file name is a pretty decent name, so you probably don't have to explain it. Uh, but if you needed to, you could add a help here in the call to add argument. So um, you might do something like uh, configuration file name or I don't know, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to do. Uh, but now that that help text here will show up in this message here. There's also some stuff you can substitute in here. Like I believe, uh, what is it? 
percent prog s yeah so this will substitute the program name um, if you had a default here which you actually don't have defaults for positional arguments but uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll show one with uh, optional arguments in a second but there's there's several things that you can substitute there so like prog there's defaults and I think that's it there might be more <laughs> anyway uh, so let's talk about optional uh, we'll also talk about short and long and aliases and defaults all at the same time and again you're gonna call it in the same way as before add argument uh, now the convention for options or optional things is to prefix them with a dash and you either have short options which is a single dash or long options uh, let's actually do well, we'll, we'll comment this out because we don't um, we don't want that uh, so let's say that we want like dash C for config file and dash dash config now you can specify as many different options that you want here and you actually don't need a short option you could just leave it as a long option and that'll work fine uh, but a long option is required for art parse uh, for everything but let's keep it like this and let's say that we also wanted you know maybe there was some backwards compatibility that we needed here so we need to define an alias for dash dash config um, and maybe that's you know <laughs> json file or something like that i don't know some alias for config <laughs> it's it's a bad example but um so yeah, we covered short options, which are just single single dash and then a C. You can actually have short options with multiple letters, um, oops, like like so. Uh, but I would not suggest it because it kind of goes against the the ideas of you know POSIX or, or GNU options. So I would always suggest using single letters for your short options. Short options being only one dash, and then your long options should be a descriptive name. Uh, the long option actually ends up being the name that you'll see in this args uh, object at the end. Uh, now, I'm, I forgot to explain this down here. I'm doing a little tricky thing to retrieve all of these as a dictionary just so that I can pretty print it. Uh, but normally you would access them by using the dot operator on this args object. But anyway, uh, here's now our, um, our optional option here. And if we go back over here and we run this again, you'll see that we now get dash c config, dash dash config config, and json file config. So the help automatically shows you all of the various options here. We run this with no options. You'll see that config by default is none. So that's the, the default there. Uh, but if we do, you know, config wat, you'll see that we can pass along an argument there. Uh, we did not cover defaults, so let's do defaults now. Uh, maybe our default is, you know, config.json or something like that actually tab this out so it's a little bit easier to see i usually like to keep the options on one line and then the arguments on another but it really doesn't matter you can pick whatever you want and you know black will have its opinion about that and other formatters will have their opinion about it um, but yeah you can set a default here and the thing that i was talking about earlier with the help message um specify the config file uh, defaults percent defaults yes uh, and so you can you can use this substitution parameter to show the default value there. So you can see if we do dash dash help again, it'll say specify the config file, default is config.json. So this is how you specify a default option for an optional option. Now, um, I didn't actually mention it here, but you can make optional options required <laughs> by setting required equals true. So now if I were to try and call this without dash dash config, It'll tell me that the following arguments are required, this one here. Um, but if we, you know, pass it in, we'll, we'll get that. Uh, it kind of makes no sense to have required equals true and default. I don't think these can ever work together. Like this default will never be applied if you have required, um, but it, it is a thing. <laughs> okay, so that covers optional options and positional options. And then the rest are just kind of extensions on those. So the first thing that we'll extend is a custom type. Uh, so you can pass the type keyword argument to add argument, and that'll allow you to pick a particular type for that option. So you might do something like parser.add argument. Maybe it's like number of days or something. Like maybe this is a logging tool. Uh, and you can use type equals int. Um, this will check the, uh, this will make sure that when you pass a days in, it will convert it to an integer automatically for you. 
Uh, we'll actually show what that does if I don't have this, so we can see the difference there. If we did days, you know, 10, you'll see that we get days as a string here. Um, and if we do days, you know, ASDF, it's not actually validating that this is an integer at all. But if we make this type equals int now, you'll see that we get an invalid int value ASDF. And if we specify 10, oh, that's not 10, there we go. You'll see that it converted it from a string up here into an integer down here. So that's how you can add types to things. Uh, you can also do custom types. So let's say, um, let's actually just copy this, but comment it out here. I really need to make a thing that uh, comments out blocks in my editor. I haven't done that yet, um, but I will, I will get that eventually. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's say we wanted a positive integer. And so we're gonna make our own custom type for that. And for a type, it's really just a callable that takes a string and returns whatever type you want. So we'll define positive int with s being a stir, returning an int. And we'll start by doing try uh, value equals int s, except I think it's value error. Um, and there's a special type that you can raise in your custom types that will um, that will signal to the arg parse framework that you said, oh, this is problematic. And I believe that type is arg parse dot argument value error. Although I think this should be that argument type error. I don't know. There's two of them. <laughs> One or the other. <laughs> Expected integer got. Uh, this something like that but now that we've got an integer here we can say um we can say what if value is less than or equal to zero raise arg parse dot argument value error so here like the type was wrong here the value is wrong um expected positive integer got value let's just make it v <laughs> so that uh, it fits in, in one line, so it's a little bit easier. I don't know, I'd probably call this value anyway. Um, but this will allow you to kind of validate that. And so now if we run this again, uh, you'll see days equals 10 does that. If we uh, pass it as a string, it'll say, you know, expected integer got ASDF. And if we pass, what, zero? Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> Uh, import arg parse or arg parse. Is it not argument value error? Maybe there's only one. I guess it's only argument type error. Okay, well, that makes it simple then. Ignore the value error then. <laughs> it's always argument type error. <laughs> type error. Cool, so now you can say, now, now you'll see it says expected positive integer got zero. That's custom types. Um, let's talk about count. This is useful if you want to use an argument that might increment or decrement something. Um, uh, a good example for that is like a verbose option that you might add in a configuration. So you might do parser.add argument verbose uh, or like dash v. Uh, usually you put the positional argument first or the short argument first. And there's a um, there's an action, so argparse has types and actions. We kind of talked about types here. And one of the actions is a, is count. And if we run this again, uh, I'll give it positive days. You'll see that verbose starts at none. This means that it was not passed at all. Uh, you can also specify like a default of zero here. I usually find that default equals zero makes the most sense for count actions, although then you can't tell whether it wasn't passed or not. Uh, just so that this was always an integer. But now if we do, you know, dash dash verbose here, let's spell verbose, you'll see that we have, you know, a verbose of one. And if we pass a bunch of Vs, you'll see it added one for this and one for each of these short options. This is actually a, a thing that happens with, with POSIX options. So you can chain short options together. But that's how you might do an or a, a count option. Uh, let's actually do Boolean options next because they're a little bit simpler to explain, or at least I have an example for them. Uh, and the way you can do Boolean options is you, uh, again, have a custom action. So let's say we were implementing like force. And there's a store true option or action here. And this will uh, by default be false. So if we run this again, you'll see that force is false. 
Uh, but if we did dash dash force now, you'll see that it sets force to true. This is just like a, a convenient action. There's also store false if you want the opposite, uh, and there's store const if you want to store constants. And then you would do you know store const and then const equals something. Um, and it would and you know it would respect your default or whatever there. Um, but that's force. Uh, let's talk about append. <laughs> Think of an example for append. Uh, I don't know. Let's just make up a one. <laughs> Parser.add argument. Let's say that, you know, maybe our program can have multiple log files or something. I don't know. Uh, and you can do action equals append here. And I usually set the default to the empty list here. You can set it to, or you can leave it out and it'll be none if it doesn't get appended. That way you can differentiate. Uh, but this allows you to collect, uh, to have this argument be repeated and, you know, collect any number of times it's called. So if we, do this by default, you'll see log is the empty list, but if we did log, you know, f1.log, now you'll see that we have one item in this list, and we can specify this argument many times. So you can see, now we have f1.log and f2.log, because I specified this argument twice. That's how append works. Uh, let's talk about choices. Choices is a way to... Um, is a way to constrict the values of a particular option. Uh, one example that I use in some of my code is for a color option. If you want to disable or enable command line coloring, you can do choices equals, you know, uh, I think mine is auto uh, always and never or something like that. Um, and if we do the help again, you'll see that color automatically gets this little notation that says it has to be one of these three. If we passed if we passed uh, color equals wet, you'll see that it gives us a nice error message automatically. Invalid choice wet, choose from auto, always, or never. Uh, but if we, you know, say always here, we'll get always passed through. And that covers most of the like very, very basic things. I wanna cover one last thing, which I find pretty useful. I actually have to uh, <laughs> comment all this out though to, um, to do this last little thing, which is subcommands. And subcommands are a way to implement a command line that's kind of like, you know, kind of like how git works, you know, with git status. Oh, I'm not in a git repository, whatever. Where you have like git status and like git checkout and like all of these subcommands to your main command. Uh, ArcParse has a way to do that with subcommands. And let's see, I, I believe it's, um, what is it? <laughs> Let me look at some code where I did this. Pre-commit, pre-commit. Uh, main.py, and I believe it's add sub parsers. Yes, okay. Um, so you do sub parsers equals parser.add sub parsers. And the destination is actually optional, but I usually find this is really useful if you want to query which command you're using. So I usually do dest equals command, and then you can add your individual commands by doing add parser. And this will make in like a nested Arg parse parser thing. <laughs> so you can do like sub parsers dot add parser. Let's say we're just doing like status. We'll make it similar to git. And this will be the status parser. And maybe the status parser has a status parser dot add argument. Maybe this has a force. I don't know. <laughs> Door true. Just like a silly example there. Maybe we also have a checkout parser. And parser checkout. Checkout parser dot add argument. Maybe this has verbose. Um, and you can add individual parsers like that. I usually find that it is necessary to do this. Parsers dot required equals true. Uh, this will make it so that a command is required. Otherwise you get weird errors where like command is sometimes none. Uh, this is, you know, of course, <laughs> if, you're, if your command has optional subcommands, then you wouldn't do this. Um, and if you're in Python 3.7 or above, you can do that here. Uh, I actually added this feature to ArcPress. <laughs> so that's me, uh, but it's not available in Python 3.6. I don't, if I recall correctly. But anyway, now that we've done that, uh, C minus, we do t.py dash dash help. You'll see that we get these individual uh, commands here. And if we were to add help here, 
uh, let's say like help equals show status and this one help equals lots of stuff because <laughs> checkout has severely overloaded um, you'll see that you can actually get descriptions for these subcommands and if we run one of those subcommands and ask for its help you can see that we get the individual arguments of the underlying commands um, check out yeah and so you can see that and you'll see if i run like you know python 3 t.py checkout we'll get just the verbose option because that's the only one that ran whereas if we run like status we'll get a different set of options here because so you can kind of think of it as like separate nested uh, argument parsers but anyway hopefully this was helpful um <laughs> kind of a kind of a whirlwind of a bunch of information so yeah. found this helpful you know leave a comment below or if you want to see other stuff that i could explain also leave a comment to reach out to me on the various platforms but thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one